good night, good night, have one down tonight, God is good, and God is good all the time. My name is Irma J. I'm spirit of God. He did get your um, right on tonight. And the time we're going to be fire from the Lord and various from the Lord. No. Um, so you're going to come from Numbers chapter 11, verse 1 to 35. You know, the Israelite leads Sam. And now the Israelites set out from the desert of Sam, you know, and traveled from place to place until the cloud came to rest in the desert. You know, so it's going to take them like three days to find a resting um, place to camp out. So they set out from the mountain of the Lord and traveled for three days, you know, to all the order of the covenant of the law went before them during those three days to find them a place to rest. You know, so the cloud of the law was over them by day. And when they set out from the camp, you know, so now Moses' father, I remember early on his father in law had visited him. He was smart and he, he tried to tell Moses how to um how to give him some help, you know, because he was overwhelming himself. But now Moses overwhelmed again. You know, but this time, you know, the father-in-law happened before, but the father-in-law said, I'm, I'm not staying this time. You know, so the father-in-law came to visit Moses again, and um, Moses had, had asked him to travel along with them. You know, because they're going around in a circle trying to find a resting place to camp out. You know, you know the father-in-law is smart. So the father-in-law said, I'm not staying this time. I, I'm, I'm not going. I'm going back to my own land. You know, he said, but Moses said, I'm going to treat you kindly. You know, the father still say he he do not want to go. You know, so buy you from the Lord. So now the people is complaining again. The Israelites, they complain again. You know, I thought I do a, a, a lot of complaining, but the Israelites, God providing for them, and they still complain. You know, so they complain about the hardship. You know, I had to read the chapter over and over before this chapter, and I still don't see what hardship they're talking about. All the hardship they had when they was a slave. You know, they're out of Egypt. So it ain't no hardship. But they complain about the hardship. But God heard them, you know, in his anger. You you gotta realize when you could complain, you say something, you whisper, or whatever the case of God can still hear you. You know, so God said he heard them. You know, they complain. He heard them in anger was aroused. You know, so they uh so then fire, you know, from the law. You know, burn among them and consume some of the outskirts of the camp. You know, so God is angry because God constantly providing for these people, and they constantly keep on complaining. You know, but when God provides for you, you don't need to complain no more. You know, and you don't need to keep on go looking back and memorizing what you had back then. No, what you had back then was whooping. You know, hardship. That was all your hardship was that when you was in Egypt. With all that being a slave and they're giving you hard labor, you, you know, and you worrying about the food, you, you know. So now the Israelites are complaining and God heard and fire burned among them, you know. So now God, you know, is angry, you know, with fire, you know, and they cried out. So God, God did them with fire, fire. So now they call, they, they're crying out to Moses. Moses can't help them but to pray and, 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 and talk to pray to God, you know, to die down to put out the fire, you know. Um, so um, Moses prayed to God, you know, and the fire died down, you know, because see, Moses is very special to God. You know, God listened to, to Moses, you know, Moses know how to calm him down, you know, because God would have kept on having that fire going. You know, so that place was called Tabern because the fire of the Lord had burned among them. You know, so the Israelites complained, and then Moses complained. You know, the Israelites complained, Moses complained, you know, because Moses getting overwhelmed again. Still, him still listen to how his father in law told him how to get his help. You know, he told him, Get you some of the elders. You know, so now he's going to have God telling him the same thing that his father-in-law told him before, how to get help. You know, so he being cranky, you, you know, because he feel overwhelmed. You know, so the Israelites complained, Moses complained, you know, but God responded positive to Moses, you know, but uh, negative to the rest of the people. And I'm about to explain to you why. You know, because the people complain among themselves. 
you know, to see, you know, like me, I'm in my stomach. I, the, the lot of things I used to do, I don't do because everything used to have, I used to pick up the phone call. Girl, look what happened. Just, you know, you know that's that's a no-no. See, God heard them complain the money itself. And that's the thing God don't want us to do. God wants us to take all our problems to Him. Not get on the phone and tell somebody. Not get to the next one and tell them your trouble. You tell your trouble to God. And see what Moses did? When the, when the Israelites came to him, they cried out to him for the problem. Guess, guess what Moses did? Moses turned around and he prayed to God. That's why God said, I'm going to um, respond to you positive. I'm going to respond to the Israelites negative because they had complained among themselves. You know, they complained among themselves. You, you know, and nothing was accomplished. You know, you don't get nothing accomplished. When you go to your friends, or even to your mom and nobody, you know, they can't do anything about this. You know, so ain't nothing going to get accomplished when we constantly talking to someone else about a problem, it will not get fixed. You know, so God is the only one. You know, we're supposed to turn around and, and pray to God and He the only one that can fix our problem. You know, so God who could solve any problem, many of us are good at complaining to each other. You know, I have been stopped doing that, you know, for the past two years. I don't get on the phone and try to call nobody about nothing. I, I, what's going on in my stomach? You know, I, I pray until I go to God for everything. I be thinking, God getting tired of me, you know. You got to go to God. God said, take it to him. You know, he said he don't sleep. You know, no matter what time it is, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, you, you take your problems to him. You know, because he was solved. Now, you take your problem to somebody else, like the Israelite did, his anger arose on them, and he had consumed them with fire. You know, he said, I'm going to answer to Moses positive. I'm, I'm going to answer to the people negative, because they complain among themselves. You know, um, so many of us are good in complaining at each other, you know, but we need to learn to take our problem to the one who can do something about it. You know, so that's why God said, don't serve no other gods, you know, or image of God. Because if you take your problem to something that can't even talk back to you, can't even react to anything, can't even help you or nothing. You know, God said, do not serve anything that can help you. God is the only one who can solve your problem. You know, so quarreling from the Lord, I, you know, that's birds. You know, so that's going to come from Numbers chapter 11, 4 through 35. You know, so now the Israelites start craving for other food. Here they go again. If they're not complaining, they, now they're craving for food. And they're craving for the food that they had in Egypt. You know, talking about they had seasoning, garlic. I didn't even know they had garlic seasoning back, back then. You know, they're thinking about the seasoning they had. They're thinking about the meat and the fish and all that kind of stuff they had in Egypt. I won't even want to try to think about that. But when you had your hardship was in Egypt, you know, the whoopings and, 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 and carrying bricks and all this kind of stuff, and you thinking about meat in Egypt, you know. So they also remember to meet the seasoning, you, you know, in Egypt. And then they also stated it was no cost. Now, God didn't charge them for nothing. You know, God provided water for them, food for them. God never charged them for that. And he's talking about the meat and all that we had in Egypt, and it was no cost. Okay, everything you get from God is no cost. God never charged charge them for the meat. He never charged them for the water. You know, so now, here we go. You know, God um, God delivered them. God delivered them from slavery. Took them from slavery. You know, the hardship, the whoopings. You know, carrying bricks and all this kind of stuff. I mean, God took them from that. You know, and you may be telling God providing for you and all you can think about is what you gonna had in Egypt that it was no cost, you know. So, but everything a problem happened, you know, they always want to go back to what it was constantly familiar with, and that's how a lot of people is. You know, sometimes you can get comfortable in your stone, living in a box, you know. And when God, God free us from our stone, you know, and sometimes you feel like you're still in bondage. You know, because every little thing happened, ooh, you better to run back where you were comfortable at. Even though it was hardship, struggling, you know, whooping, bricks, you know, you got comfortable. Sometimes you get comfortable in in, in your own, own storm, in, in the darkness. You get comfortable. And every time something happened, the Israelites wished they was back 
to slavery. After then, a cry to God 430 years. God, please come and get us out. Please come and get us out. Cry out to God every day. And when God come in and deliver them from slavery, all they can think about, we want to go back. You know, you don't never want, don't never, never wants to go back to what God will pull you back, pull you out of. You know, so when God bring you out, don't want to go back. Never wish, you know, you was back to that place. You know, the hardship. You know, all the t all the struggles, all the whooping. You know, don't never wants to go back to your darkness. You, you know, so they say they never seen anything but man. Now, see, they were getting disgusted with God food. You know, God was bringing man to die. And they say, and so they, they're thinking about the food and the meat they had in Egypt, and they're looking at somebody, and this all we see is some man. You know, they're being ungrateful. You know, they're being ungrateful when when you can't get the food in Egypt, you're out of there. you under God right now. And if God's sending you something, be grateful. You ought to be grateful because he all providing for you in your stone. You know, now the man has come from God. The man who was coming down to the ground, so they start gathering it and they cook it, you know, in a pot and made it into loaves. So when the Jew sat on the camp at night, the man also came down. You know, so you got man that coming down. And then when it was coming down already, it's a coming down all fluffy. All you got to do is just toast it up, warm it up a little bit. You know, you had something to eat, you know, but all they're thinking about, we ain't got no seasoning. We, uh, we ain't got no meat to go with yourself. You know, we had meat seasoning and all this kind of stuff in Egypt. You're being ungrateful. You, you know, you're being ungrateful because if God sent in any kind of food better than nothing. You can't go back to Egypt and get you no food. You know, God had to deliver you from slavery. You know, and man is 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 bright. That's feeling. You know, you know, so dissatisfaction. You know, comes when our attention shifts, you know, from what we have to what we don't have. You know, so their attention, you know, start focusing on what they cannot have instead of focusing on what they have. You know, what God already is giving them. You know, so people of Israel didn't seem to um, to notice what God was doing for them, you know, um, setting them free, you know, making them a nation, you know, giving them a new land. You know, because they were so wrapped up in what God wasn't doing. And some, that's some of us too. I'm talking about myself too. Sometimes we can't see the unseen what God is doing. You know, just like God said, they cannot see that I'm giving you a land. You know, I'm giving you, dropping you food down. Your shoes and your clothes not wearing out. You know, God doing all these things. But sometimes, you know, you can't see the unseen. But God always working in our behalf. He always working in our behalf, you know. He giving, he giving the Israelite anything they ask for. They complain and God still provide for them, you know, because they were so wrapped up in what they was not seeing and start visualizing of what they can not have, you know. So, but um, the delicious um, Egyptian, you know, food they had left behind, you know, they just kept on. You know, memorizing what they left behind. You know, just like Lot White. You know, but God told her, I need you to move quickly. You know, and don't look back. Don't stop. But guess what? She had to look one more time at her apartment. You know, you know, you sometimes you can buy a new living room set. Bear one set. God say move. But let me look at my bedroom set one more time. Let me look at my apartment one more time. You know, and that's how the this this how the Israelite is. They still memorizing all that hard time. You know, all that hardship. So they forgot that the whooping, you know, the hardship, you know, the Egyptian, the slavery, you know, no, no, the cost of eating that food. You know, hey, the cost of eating that food with them had caused whooping and hardship and everything else. You know, so the Israel always was looking backwards. And I'm telling you, I understand. I'm talking to myself too. I ain't gonna never go backwards. I'm, I'm crying. I'm crying out my own self to get out of this stone. I'm never gonna wanna look back. You never don't wanna look back to the hardship. You know, all that whooping they had received, all the hardship 
you know, carrying bricks. And when they was pregnant, they had to carry bricks and all that. Because the new king, they had wanted all the, the um, male babies, you know, to be dead. They wanted them to keep losing all their babies. So they had even had the women carrying bricks so they could lose the babies. So you want to go back to that? Never want to go back to your hardship. When God deliver us out of our bondage, when God deliver us out of our slavery, you know, move forward. You know, don't worry about the steaks and potatoes that you had. Worry about the new thing that God could have in your life. See, God working behind the scenes. He's giving, he's trying to get set up a land for them, you know, with milk and honey. You know, he's trying to set up stuff for them. He's setting rules and regulations and everything for them to enter that new land. You know, they worry about um, the stuff that they had in the past and God worrying about preparing their future. You know, so uh, so why they complain? God already is dropping food down. So why are they complaining and memorizing on the steaks and the potatoes and, and, and the fish and all that they had in Egypt? God already was dropping food down. Why they was talking and complaining, the food just coming down. You know, so we can never see the unseen what God is doing in our life. But we are always, He is always working on our behalf. You know, while we still memorizing on the past and, and keep on focusing on the hardship that we're doing, God is open doors. You know, making new lands exist with milk and honey. You know, God is creating all kinds of stuff while we still focusing on our pain and suffering and, and struggling on myself and struggling and all this kind of stuff. And God is working on our behalf. You know, because why did Israel like complain? God is, 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 is preparing rules and recollections for their new land. You know, God got a new land for them with milk and honey. You know, he, he preparing how they're going to conquer their land. See, God is preparing everything for us, but we be complaining in our hardship. You, you know, so every morning, every morning the Israelite, when they threw back their tent, when they threw back their tent to open their door, they witnessed God's miracle. The food is just everywhere. They witness God miracle. You know, God covering the ground. God covering the ground with me. God covering the ground with with man. You know, when you, that's amazing. When you just open your door, when you wake up in the morning, you open your door. You you got bread here and there. You just grab you some bread. And you just pick you some coffee. You just sit down and eat. You know, that's how they had it. They, you know, they had it made. You know, but they still wants to complain about the past, about the season and the meeting and all this kind of stuff. Still the focus on what God giving them now. You know, so uh to cover the ground, you know, from heaven. But soon that wasn't enough. So these are some ungrateful people. You know, all the stuff that God has done for them, you know, you open your door and you just seen miracles everywhere. But it still was not enough. You know, sometimes you cannot please people these days, you know. God kept doing everything he can for these people, and it was not enough. You know, so so uh, so that wasn't enough. So they wanted more. They wanted more quickly. You know, what God did, you know, instead, they demanded me, and they stopped trusting God. You know, they stopped trusting God, you know, to care for them. God was caring for them. Giving them even in their complaint, God still was providing. God still was caring for them. You know, uh, so they still remember to meet the head of Egypt. You know, so Moses heard the people, you know, of every um, family at the entrance to the tent. So now they're making Moses mad. You know, so the Lord became exceedingly um, angry. You know, and Moses was troubled. So God angry. You got God angry. You got Moses trouble. Moses is going to start talking out his head. He's going to be all in his feelings now. You, you know, so Moses is trouble. You know, so he, he asked God, you know, why have you brought this trouble on me? Why you brought this trouble on me? Now, he in his feelings now. You know, the Israelite complaint. So now Moses complaining to God. You know, so now sometimes doing the work for God. You know, um, if the Lord is too heavy, it's okay to inform God. To lighten your load, you know. Moses said, "What have I done, you know, to displease you that you have put this burden all on these people, on me, you know?" And sometimes you be in your darkness, you know, and you get so overwhelmed, you know. You know, when you work for God, you know, God go big, you know. But sometimes if you get overwhelmed, it's okay to ask Him to lighten your load, you you know. And he will lighten your load if he feel like it needs to be light. 
because God feel like you got more energy to go. You know, because I said it multiple times, but God feel like you, you still got some more to go. You know, he know when a light in your load, when he feel like you know, got dropped by. You know, so, um, so, um, so Moses is mad. You know, he said, did I conceive all these people? Now he talking sarcastic now. You know, because he in his feelings now. He said, did I conceive these people? Did not nurse these people? Now these people is his people too now. You know, because he come from, um, he come from Jacob, um, children. You know, so they, they, they're his ancestors too. You, you know, so did he said, did I conceive these people? Did I nurse these people? You know, did I carry them to your own as nurse them? You know, so then he gonna tell God, you promised a land, a oak, to their ancestors, but you got me carrying these people. You know, so he he read it in his feelings now talking to God. So what where where can I get me? For these people, God, please give us some meat right now for these people, because these people is keep on coming at me about me. So Moses telling God how he feel that he cannot carry all these people by himself. He said the load is too heavy. Now he must have stopped doing what the father-in-law had told him to do. He said you get some of these elders and you make them leaders. You know, you keep on stopping and, and, and keep on allowing yourself to overwhelm your own self. You know, so now Moses is still talking to God, and is this how you know you are going to treat me? You know, so uh, please go ahead and, and kill. So now he at Moses at a breaking point. He had a breaking point. You you know he feel like the work he done for God is too big. You, you know he said he overwhelmed. You know he said I didn't nurse these people. I didn't conceive these people. He said you made an oath to these people to the ancestors. You know, he said this this is this is too heavy for me. You know, he said just go ahead on and kill me, God. Just go ahead on. But you know, God ain't ready for him yet. You, you know, you know, God ain't ready for him yet. You know, he gonna take him halfway to the to the promised land. You know, and then, you know, because he, he the leader and, and and he complained right along with the Israelites. You know, so if I had found favor in your eyes, do not let me face my own run. You know, so and now Moses at a breaking point. You know, that he telling God to take his life. You know, so he keep letting himself get overwhelmed. And just a second time somebody got to tell him how to do this, you know, because you know he got thousands of people. He this low is heaven. You know, he got thousands. You know, remember it was two million that marched out from Pharaoh. You know, so that is a heaven low, you know. But the Lord said to Moses, bring, bring him 70 elders, you know, and tell him, y'all all meet me at the tent. You know, meet him at the tent. You know, so that um, they may stand there with you. So they can stand there with Moses here and the 70 elders. You know, so God will speak to them there. And God said, I will, God said I'm going to give some of the power off of you and put it on the 70 elders. You know, so, you know, you know, God can com communicate with us properly, you know, through um, dreams or sometimes we can hear his voice, you know, so the Israelite, they can't, they don't have that kind of, they don't have that kind of special spirits to, to hear all that from God. So that's why he had to put some of the spirit on the 70 um, elders. So, so when God get ready to communicate with them, they'll be able to um, hear his um, communication. You, you know, so God will speak to them, and God said, I will take some of the power of the Spirit, you know, that is on Moses, and put it on the 70 elders, you know. So they will share the burden, you know, of the people with you, you, you know, so you um, so you will not have to carry them along. Now, see, God smart. God figured this out for him. Now, this is not, now, this not nothing new, you know, just a second time, because the father love told him that before, earlier on. You know, God, God gonna put um, the power of spirit on some, on the seventy elders. You, you know, so they're gonna be able to communicate with God also now. You know, so nobody else can communicate with God but Moses. You know, because God put God put the spirit on Moses to be able to prophesy and hear God instruction and speak to him and everything else. So now these seventy elders, they're gonna be able to do the same thing too. You know, so he won't have to carry this load. 
all alone by himself. So remember, Moses' father-in-law told him the same thing. You know, divide some of these elders and make them leaders. You, you know, make them leaders to help you carry some of that load. Now, this God, God told him this, but the father-in-law told him that early on. So now God had to tell Moses. Now he started having them being leaders, you know, but stop, you know, to stop and stop complaining. So God said to Moses, tell the people to concentrate themselves in preparation for tomorrow. You know, when you eat meat, now God, you know, remember they were complaining about me. Now God, you see, all God was doing was dropping that manna down. That's still feeling, you know, that's the thick, thick, fluffy um, bread. You, you can eat the fluffy bread and, and with some call for milk, you full. You, you know, so God said, get ready for, get ready for tomorrow. See, God got surprised for them. You get ready for tomorrow. You want some meat? Okay, I'm about to give you some meat. You know, so the Lord heard them. He heard them that only if they had meat in Egypt, you know, God going to provide for them, but God also mad at the same time, you know, because he going he gonna to burn them again for keep on wanting to crave for food in Egypt when God is constantly keep on providing for them. So the Lord will give you meat. And you will eat it, you know. You will not eat it just for one day. You will not eat it just for two days. You will not eat it for five and ten and twenty days. You want to eat it for a whole month until that meat stuff start coming out your nostrils. You you keep on craving for me. God said, I'm about to give you some meat. You wait till tomorrow morning. You know, I'm going to give you meat. Y'all going to have enough meat for a whole month. You're going to eat so much meat till it's going to start coming out your nostrils. You know, so uh, so God gonna get on me from them. Keep on praying for me. You know, so because you have rejected the Lord, you have rejected the Lord, who is among you, you know, and have and have been for y'all and providing for y'all. Why did you ever, you know, leave Egypt? You know, so they question why we had left Egypt. You know, so that's another thing gonna take God off because. You cried to God. Your God could have stood what he was doing there, sitting in his crown, in his throne, on chair. You cried to God. You know, talking about why we love Egypt. You cried to God to pull y'all away from slavery. You, you know, so now Moses said, you know, he have, now, you got the Israelite complaining. You got Moses complaining. You got the Israelite got doubt. doubt. You got Moses got doubt. Moses witnessed God's power. But now, here go Moses. You know, remember God, God said, you're going to have enough meat for a whole month. You know, so you're going to have so much, you're going to eat so much meat, you're gonna, it's going to be coming all out your now, natural. You know, but then, here go Moses. You know, we, Moses said, I have 600,000 men on foot. You know, and you say you got meat for a whole month? Moses said, would that be enough? You know, you, you remember Jesus fed, fed for 5,000 people with two fish and, and some loaf of bread. You know, so then God responded. Moses said, if this food going to be enough, I got 600,000 um, men on foot. And I got flocks, you know, animals, and all this they have to eat. You know, so the Lord said to Moses, if the law arm is too short, God said, if my arm is too short. You know, so Moses got down. He witnessed God's power. You know, so now you will see. God said, now you're going to see, you know, what I say. You know, what come true. You know, God said, it's my own too short. Now you is about to see what I say will come true. You know, so Moses had witnessed God's power. So we don't know why he got down. You know, he witnessed God's power, particular miracles, you know. But yet, at this time, he questioned God's ability, you know, to feed the wandering Israel like, you know. And Moses doubt God's power, you know, how much in the early it is for us to do the same thing. You know, we all do that sometimes, you know. God got so much power, and I'm talking to myself too. You know, God can, you know, we got, got all this stuff, this, this Bible here. You know, it's showing us that God can move mountains. You know, God can put your enemies under a red sea. You know, because we're going to see all that going to come along. You know, God can make things happen. You know, but when, when we, in, we in the unseen, 
faith don't waver. You know, Moses, Moses got doubt. He was with God, but God was using all his power. You know, so God says, my own two show. You know, now you is about to see what, what I say will come true. You know, but completely depending upon God initially regarding of our level of spiritual maturity, we will begin to rely on our own understanding. And sometimes we do that, but we cannot rely on our own understanding because it's going to keep us at a standstill. You know, we have to, no matter how I'm talking to myself and anybody else that's in the stone, no matter how you stone look, no matter how much of pain and suffering we have, we have to still rely on God. Because once we walk away and say we don't need God and go our own way, everything's going to start tumbling down. And most likely, you know, you will die in the process. You know, God's spirit over us to lead us in his direction. You know, and sometimes we get so anxious and, and we get so so frustrated. The Israelites so frustrated. They never got to the promised land. They've been left been left Egypt, you know, so they're getting frustrated, they're going around this circle trying to find a resting place, you know, to camp out, you know, you know, and, and they really don't even take it alone to get to, uh, uh, um, to the Canaan, to, to the Canaan, on uh, the land of Canaan, you know, but by all this complaining, God just got them running around, you know, they're going to take them 40 years, when here, they say it's supposed to take them three days to get to the land, that's why they're doing us preparation, because it takes you three days to get to Canaan from, from, um, Egypt. But it's going to take them 40 years because they're going to keep on complaining. And God's going to keep them wandering around. That's why God called them right here. Faith, the wandering Israel. That, that's, what, that's what God called them, the wandering Israel. Because God's going to have them wandering around, running around in that desert for 40 years. And it's going to take you 40 years to get to Canaan. Just like Moses said, so it's fall in love. We got three days, you know, to try to get to the land that God has given us. But it's going to take them 40 years of the Israelite complaint. You know, so we have to remember that God has power and his present power that we can be sure that when we are not cutting off our potential help. You know, that's why a lot of time I got, I got realized, oh, I'm sorry, God. You know, I, I apologize. You got to, you got to apologize. You got to bend down. You got to do everything you can because in the complaint, God can remember God want to walk away from the Israelites. Moses plead for God to come with them. You, you know, their trip's supposed to take three days to camp. That's why God still giving them all the rules. Remember two days ago, and give them all the rules and regulations because they're about to enter to the land. It don't take for three days. But it's really, they're not going to even enter the land until 40 years later. You know, so God said, it's the law on, it's too short. You know, how strong is God? You know, it is easy to trust God, you know, when we can see his mighty hand. It was easy for Moses to trust God when he was doing the power with his staff and all this kind of stuff, you know. But now God is, is working behind the scene, you know. So it's the unseen that the Israelite and Moses cannot see, you know, because they're wandering around and they're getting frustrated. And that's how we all get some time when we end our stone. And every time you wake up in the morning, it's still at a standstill. You know, every time they wake up in the morning, they're still in the desert. You know, and they're like, when are we going to get to our land? We keep on getting hungry. We keep on getting thirsty. You know, when are we going to get there? It's past three days. When are we going to get to our land? We all get to that point. We all um, complain and get to that point. But God is be working it out. He be working it out. You know, he getting the land together. He getting the rules and regulations to, together. And why they keep disturbing him with all this complaining, he going to have those kids wandering around. That's why he called them the wandering Israel. You know, so God said, it's the law only to show. God is strong. It is easy to trust God when we see the mighty hand in act. You know, but Moses saw God, you know, power before him. And he still died. That because he saw the power in front of his eyes. See, it's easy to believe. It's easy to trust when you can see it. You know, but we have to learn how to unsee um, the, the, the power of God and constantly keep trusting Him. You know, so we see that the Israelites and Moses forget how powerful God really is. You know, God owns. God said, My own is not too sharp. You know, you think how sharp? You, you, you think my own, my own is not too sharp. You know, God can, God can. 
moved mountains, you know. So God had learned. Moses had learned that God's strength is always about. You know, God had to let him know. My own is my own to show. You know, you know, um, when God said what I say, you was about to see what's gonna come to pass. You know, so Moses told him what the law said. And he brought together 70 elders. He done what God told him, bringing 70 elders. And they stand around the tent along with Moses. You know, so the law came down. The law came down in the cloud. You know, he spoke with them. You know, he took some of the power of spirit that was on Moses and put it on the 70 elders. And they're going to be able to prophesize. You know, God's going to be able to get in their, their vision, their dream, and everything else. You know, so when the spirit, you know, rests on them, they prophesied but did not do anything. You know, so they, God put God put the spirit on them. But then what they did not want to pay attention, you know, they were supposed to prophesy, you know, because they got to help Moses. You know, so they got to listen to God, you know, first. They got to listen to God, see God in, in the dream, the vision. But they just walk away like it was nothing. You know, so the two men, the two of the um, elders, they remain in the camp. They're not taking it serious. You know, so they were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. You know, but the spirit also still rests on them. You know, and they prophesied in the camp. You know, the young man, you know, told Moses that the two men prophesied in the camp. You know, but when Joshua had uh, told Moses, you know, to stop these two men, you know, Moses replied and told Joshua, Oh, you jealous? You know, because most because God did not put no power or spirit on Joshua. You know, Joshua did a good job in helping out too. But God did not put no, no power or spirit on Joshua. So Moses asked him, Are you jealous? You know, so Joshua, that why Moses had told him, and you jealous. Now, Moses are still in his feelings. You know, he wished that all the law people was proper. He, he wished all of them was proper. You know, and that the law will pour the spirit on all of them. You know, that I mean, if God do that, then I mean, God don't need Moses then. You know, he trying to depart his own self. You know, so Moses was looking forward to the day when all God people will experience the pouring out of God's spirit. You know, so Prophet Job recalled it that God promised to pour out his spirit, you know, on all the believers, the same thing that Moses wanted. You know, so now the wind had went out from the Lord and he drove birds in front of the sea and then scattered them up to two cubits deep all around the camp. You know, so now, you know, the Israelite in the camp. So God got all these birds camping all around the camp. You, you know, birds just camp all around. So imagine you come out your front door, and that's all you see all, all around the camp. So they said all around the camp, you know. Um, so all that day, in night, you know, the in the next day, you, you know, they went out and gathered all the birds, and no one gathered less than 10. You, you know, so they try, you, you try to move, get all the birds from all around. They all camp around the tent. So they spread them out all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, you know, I'll get them so much meat, so they still got meat all between their teeth and stuff. You know, um, it could be consumed in the anger of the law, burned against the people, and struck them with a severe clash. Now, you remember all the plans that God kept putting on Pharaoh? Now he putting it on, on Israel. He trying to shut them up because they constantly keep on complaining. So they was burned with the people who had craved for other food. Now the one that kept on craving for other food that, that they had in Egypt, that's the one God had put their flesh on. You know, so now God said, they was craving for other food. You know, so God had given them meat and they still was thinking about the food that they had in Egypt. Now, that's being ungrateful, you know. So craving or lushing is more than inappropriate. It can be an unnatural, a greedy desire. So they had, they had a greedy desire. But God providing for you to the meat coming out your nostrils. And you may tell me, you're still thinking about the meat in Egypt? That's being ungrateful, you know, for anything. The knowledge, possession, influence over others. You know, this circumstance that God punished the Israelites for craving, you know, good food. They wanted good food. 
you know, the season with the garlic season and all this kind of stuff. They wanted some good food. You know, they must have had steak and potato and all this kind of stuff. You know, but God giving them meat, God giving them man, God giving them everything in this deal was the plan. You know, so if they were craving for good food, you know, the sin, you know, was alone um, that is, uh, allowed their desire to turn into greed. You know, so God gave them meat, but still thinking about meat that they had in Egypt. You know, they felt like it was their right to have fine food. You know, and they could think about it, and they couldn't think about nothing else. The more God provided for them, the more they just kept on thinking about the food they had in Egypt. And they couldn't think of nothing else but that meat they had in Egypt. You know, so when we become preoccupied, you know, with something, until it affects your own perspective on everything else, you know, you have moved from desire to love, you know, and away from God. You know, and I'm talking to myself too. We have to consequence, you know, con um, keep on concentrating on God. And a lot of times we concentrate on our problem. We concentrate on our situation. You know, God kept on working on their behalf. You know, working on their new land. God said, I'm working on a new land for y'all. You know, I'm, I'm trying to give y'all instruction and everything else what you're going to do in your new land. And y'all keep bothering me about the meat that y'all had in Egypt. Okay, I'm sending you meat. You eat enough meat to it coming out your nostril, you know. And then here go Moses, you know. Will that be enough? I got 600,000 men on foot right now. I got so many animals that need to be eaten too. You know, God says, my own too short. You know, you know. now Moses saw all God's power, and he's still being in denial. You know, he's still being in denial, you know. So God God got his life complaining. He got Moses complaining, you know. So God got to show them what he can do. He see that if my arms is not too, too short, I, I, can, um, I can provide for 10, 2 million people, you know, with the food of once a month. He said, you, you, you got a food for, uh, for a month, you know, and I got 600,000 people. So God showed him, you know, that he had enough food for them to eat. The food just start coming out there now be food just stuck all in their teeth and everything, you know, and they just constantly was complaining God just kept on providing, you know, so when we become preoccupied with something until it affects your perspective, you know, on everything else, you know, that, you know, God kept on providing for them and they just kept on thinking about that meat, you, you know, it's affected their perspective on everything else, you know, you have to, you, you, you move from the desire to lust to greediness, they were being greedy, you know, and you move away from God, you know, when God kept on providing, you know, and they kept complaining about it, and, 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 and talking about what they had in Egypt, you, you don't move away from God, you know, because God doing this here, you thinking about that, your perspective was somewhere else, you know, and God focused on your new land, and see, a lot of times, you know, God is working behind the scenes, and a lot of times, we in that darkness, we can't see the unseen, you know, the Israelite couldn't see the unseen, but he, he trying to break things out for that new land, you know, and by that kept on complaining, what's supposed to be taking three days, going to end up taking 40 years. You know, it going to end up taking the 40 years, you know. So now we see God doing his preparation for their new land, because if they're in a preparation, it's supposed to take three days for the, enter the land of Canaan. You know, but if I don't keep coming up with situation after situation complain, then you got Moses complaining, you know, God gonna allow them to wander around that, that desert for 40 years. You know, that's why God called them to wander in is the Israelite. Yeah, you know, because they, they their perspective is, is still in Egypt. You know, they cried to God to move them out of Egypt. But every time a situation come on, they wish they was back. You, you could have just let us be a slave. And then, then Moses on top of it, you know, this is too much. Just, just take my life. You know, and, and the father not told him once before, you know, how to get you some help. And God told him the same thing the father not told him before. You know, you get you seven the elders. God got him seven the elders, you know, and took some of the spirit off of Moses and put it on the power of spirit on all the seven um, elders. So they can, so they can, God can prophesy to them and, and, and get in their own dream and vision and everything else. Can start helping Moses. So God took some of the load off of Moses. It's okay when you're overwhelmed, you know, to tell God to take some of the, the burden off. 
you know, but don't never tell God to take your life. I will never pop that up in my head that, that I want to be gone. You know, you've got to keep on surviving and keep on moving forward when you're in that purpose with God, you know, and nobody but God can tell no. Okay, let's stop this. Okay, you know, Moses told him to take your life. God said no. God said no. This is what we're going to do. You're going to get seven the elders. I'm going to put some of the spirit on them. They're going to be able to prophesize. And they're going to be able to help you. And that's some of the load being released off of your shoulder. You know. And then you had, then you had a part of the story. When the Israelites complained among themselves. You know. And then when it went to Moses. Moses didn't complain to them. Moses took it to God. So that's when God said. I'm going to deal with two Moses positive. I'm going to deal with the Israelites negative. Because they... They complain among themselves to the taking it to him. Now God wanna take our problems to him. Not mumbling among itself, you know, and calling this one on the phone. That just make the matter worse. You, you know. I have problem situations. I'm going through so much. I don't ever pick up the phone without nobody. You know, I take my issues to God and that's what Moses did. Soon the complaint came to most, most prayed and took it to God. The Israelite mumble and complain to them among itself. And that's what God don't like for us. To, to have our complaint to someone else. He wanted us to take all our problems to him. You know, and God said his own is not too sharp. You know, to feed all the people, to feed your 600,000 people, to feed all the Israelites, the elders. God said my own is not too sharp. Whatever I say, you know, it's going to come to pass because I am the Lord. You know, so that's all the word I have for you today. Y'all have a blessed day and I'll see you on the next video.